Sorry, I got lost for a minute. Sorry about that. Uh, I think I can now call upon uh, Rotarian uh, Jeremy and Bicha to say for to lead us in the four-way test. Thank you, Madam President, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair? to all concerned? Will it be build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, Terry and Jeremy, for that. And uh, I want to start us off by giving um, the toast to the good health of the president. Let's all put our right hand across our of our hearts and then if you have a glass if you have something to toast let's pick it up and we give a toast to the president to the president, president. like i said this is an exciting month for us as we go towards the holiday season however i want to remind all of us of a few things um, we have our annual general assembly uh, coming up next week on Tuesday. It will be a um, membership only meeting and we have uh, items that have been set out. The agenda was already sent out. One, we are excited to be having the elections for our club officials for 2023, 2024. Um, this is in line in that we must start mentoring our leadership so that as they come in, they exactly know what they are going to do and make sure that uh, they are set for this noble uh, task of being in the leadership of our club. So I urge all of you, we had sent out an email requesting for nominations uh, to leaders that we have, we could have identified, we could have thought of, and uh, they're willing to come up and serve in these positions that, uh, are going up. So therefore, I want to remind all of us to do that. Let's have your nominations. Let's have your thoughts about this process. And uh, it will be that the deadline was supposed to be this week, but we are extending it by one, by up to Monday, end of this uh, beginning of next week, so that by Tuesday, we'll have been able to sort out all the issues surrounding the preparations on how we are going to conduct those elections. Then uh, in the same club assembly, of course, there'll be the adoption of the bylaws and uh, doing a club health check on where we are in terms of the, the different things that we are doing in the club. Um, important to note also in this month, we have um, a visit, a project visit to hand over the water tank on Saturday, the 11th of December. Um, as you know, we had gone to Masi Alia as a club with the, joined together with the Lottery Club of Higiri and Optiven for tree planting at the Kasolongo and Masi police station. Um, and now there was, there, there was an appeal that was done for the, us to go back and uh, have a sustainability program to ensure that the trees that we planted, that were about four, 500 trees, are well watered and they'll be able to survive in that environment. So we're going to donate those water tanks on 11 December and I would urge all of us to save this date and to water a plant each. That's the initiative that will have a 300 shillings per person. And this can be sent through the club admin number, which uh, our secretary Marcy can project and uh, for purposes of planning and everything else, uh, Vince will be responsible for organizing that. And you can reach out on his uh, number on that activity. Um, then uh, as usual, when we go towards the end of the year, we usually have our Christmas celebration, a party. Um, the coolest club will have our coolest festive celebration 
we will be celebrating our big O, um, all Rotarians and our Rotaractors who are turning in their big O that starts from the 30s up to the highest that we shall have. It's going to be an exciting event. So that's a date we also need to stay to ensure we are on top of things. We shall also celebrate, again, I know we celebrated during the DG's visit, our static first birthday, which was just yesterday. So can we give ourselves an applause? It was, it's not every day we celebrate such, um, a, a, such a, an achievement. We are 31 years since the club was chartered in, on 29th November, 1990. So let's give ourselves a clap for being in this Kulev club. Then, um, of course, we have uh, the DCA coming up very soon in Diani at the Neptune from May 15th, from May 12th to 15th this, this uh, next year. And uh, we still have uh, not so many people who have uh, done the registration. The current rate is at 24,150. And this again is until the end of December. So those who have not registered, the DG has promised this is going to be one of the best ever DCAs that we've ever had. So I urge all of us, let's register for this. And uh, like we said earlier, you can be able to pay in partials and uh, as long as you pay before the date comes in. So kindly register for that. At the same time, there's also the convention coming soon after the DCA. It's uh, Houston, Texas, USA from 4th to 8th of June, 2022. The current rate is at 475. And again, this goes up to mid uh, next month, 15th of December. And uh, I urge all of us to make sure that uh, we register and we have as many club members who can attend uh, the DCA to go, and especially the ones who have never been there. It's a, very, it's a fun event, it's full of lottery activities. You learn more and more of what other Rotarians are doing across the world. So, uh, some of this. Uh, sorry, and finally, I also want to congratulate everybody who made it to give to the foundation. We had recognition during the foundation dinner that was held on Saturday. And congratulations to all Rotarians who stood up and supported that. And uh, all of us also, because we also have paid uh, our contributions, which are in our subs, towards that uh, event. But the 52 week PHF build up challenge continues. And just to remind us that if you contribute a thousand weekly to the Lottery Foundation, it will be a build up to you becoming a PHF. That is a Paul Harris fellow. For both non PHFs and those moving forward, we are encouraged to contribute. And that's a challenge that we are given by the DG to contribute 1,000 a week that will build up towards your contribution. Uh, fundraising announcements and uh, the, the director for that would comment about that again. We did have an announcement on fundraising where we had said, let's start to, to support our club initiatives, especially the back to school shopping. Uh, December is coming, the children are closing and we'll be expected to pay our fees for the children that we are supporting. So the initiatives back to school shopping, the geometric process for the candidates, uh, and the sanitary purchase uh, for uh, sanitary pad purchase, we need some. We need to have to contribute towards that. So even if it is through the bonga points, please let's do it. We are all able to contribute that. Finally, but not the least, please subs. I want to remind all members we are going towards December. Let's make sure we have finished the payment of our subs at least by December thirty first. And uh, they continue on behalf of Mercy. I just want to remind all of us there is a meeting attendance fee of 200 shillings per meeting. Uh, Mercy will uh, put on the screen the number that the attendance fee will be paid to, and that will also include the PHF challenge that you've given, and then the happy dollars collection by our SCE. And I'm sure he'll come up to that. The number will be shared. So as we continue with the meeting, 
let's do that. Now, unless there are in, there's any other director who needs to make a, another announcement, I'll give you two minutes to just give us that. If it is not there, then we can continue. Any announcement? Any announcement from any director? So if there's no announcement, then I'll call upon Rotarian Murphy to introduce our guest speaker and before he introduces them. Uh, Martin, we are very, very excited to have you in this meeting and uh, accepting we just humble that you accepted to come to our club and talk to us about the opportunities and challenges in 2022. But I want to call upon Rotarian Murphy to do the introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. I hope you can all hear me. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians, friends and family of Rotary. It really is a great honor for me to be hosting or as the speaker secretary to be introducing to you our guest speaker today, uh, Dr. Martin Odor Otieno. And let me first start by just reiterating that today is Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday that comes after the Thanksgiving Thursday, which originally was being celebrated in the US but has now caught up with the rest of us in the whole world. So I encourage you, even following what Madam President has shared, let's remember that today is Giving Tuesday and we want to share that which we have been blessed with so that others can also uh, enjoy something that we have contributed. So this afternoon, um, once again, I want to just introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Martin Odoro Tieno. He was supposed to be our guest speaker sometime back in August. And then thanks to a public holiday, we were not able to feature him. But as opportunity rendered itself again, and today he, we have been able to have him share with us. I happened to attend a session that he was hosting for his, um, the trainings that he offers through his company. Um, and it's called the, his company, the Leadership Group Limited. And when I listened to it, I gleaned so much insights of what 2022 will be looking like. And I thought this would be a fantastic conversation to invite him to come and also share with the Rotary family. So Martin is an independent business advisor, accredited executive coach, a governance expert, and the founder of the consulting firm known as the Leadership Group Limited. He's been supporting organizations in areas of executive coaching, and I have been privileged to attend some of his sessions. Also in leadership development, board governance and effectiveness programs. Prior to that, he has had an illustrious career working for KCB Group and ending up as the CEO between the years 2005 and 2012. He's also worked in financial services. He's an industry expert and has worked with Deloitte East Africa, Barclays Bank, both in Kenya and South Africa, BAT, British American Tobacco, and also served as part of the dream team that served in the public service in Kenya between 1999 and 2001 and he was the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Finance and Treasury. Today, he's a non-executive director for a number of listed companies and private organizations. So what does that mean, members? It means that when we are having uh, Martin speaking to us about opportunities and challenges in 2022, 
he is speaking from an expert point of view. So let's put our hands together and welcome Dr. Martin Odor Otieno. Karibu sana to Rotary Club of Nairobi East. Over to you, Martin. Uh, thank you very much, Masi. And uh, thank you, uh, President. Uh, thank you, Rotarians, for inviting me here. I'm very delighted to be with you here. Um, let me just, uh, Masi, uh, see if I can share my screen before um, I go any further. I believe you should be able to do that. So just give it a so try. Just, just confirm to me if you can see the screen. Yes, we can. Great. So good afternoon um, uh, once again, and uh, thank you for hosting sorry, me here. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Hi, Martin. Yes, Kelly. You wanna you wanna put it on presenter mode? Presentation okay. mode. Uh, let me do that again, Kelly. Thanks. Um, Let me try and do that. Is that any better? Yes, it's perfect. All right, thank you very much, uh, Kelly. So Kelly has just invited an introduction for herself, by the way. So I'm joined here by two of my colleagues from the leadership group, uh, Kelly Muigai, whom you can see on the screen, and Kefa Bosire uh, from, uh, from the leadership group. So um, I do have, uh, uh, not much time for this discussion this afternoon. So I'd like to go straight into it. Uh, when Masi invited me to come and speak, uh, we agreed that I would speak on this topic of crystal gazing, uh, challenges and opportunities for 2022. As we are coming to the end of this year, uh, 2021, in, uh, in a few weeks time, in fact, uh, today is the last day of November. So tomorrow we start the last month of the year. Uh, it's good for us just to begin to reflect on, uh, you know, what does the next 12 months uh, 12, what do the next 12 months uh, uh, look like? What could they contain for us? And so uh, that is a topic for our conversation uh, this afternoon. Uh, Masias mentioned that uh, I lead uh, an organization called the Leadership Group. Uh, at the Leadership Group, we do uh, offer a number of services, uh, starting with executive coaching uh, to support leaders and organizations uh, get better and better at what they do. Uh, and, and uh, who they are and, uh, you know, what makes them uh, who they are and, uh, and really become better versions of themselves. We also, in the space of business advisory, support organizations with regard to strategy development and strategy execution. We offer services in the area of change uh, management and culture, which is a big thing uh, in, uh, in transforming organizations. We also offer services in mentorship, uh, which is a close cousin to coaching. And then we work with boards of directors in the area of governance and board uh, practice uh, to create, help uh, boards uh, become again, more effective at individual board member level, but also at uh, collective board level. Uh, we offer some board governance audits, uh, as well as board training. And finally, in the area of leadership, again, we offer a number of leadership training, uh, uh, open programs, as well as bespoke programs for individual uh, organizations. And uh, uh, Kelly will be sharing with you in the chat box, uh, our contacts and our calendar for 2022, in case you want to uh, join us on any one of our programs, uh, including our monthly free webinars that we host in the third week of every month. So what do we want to do uh, in this uh, short time that we have? We want to really reflect on the political, economic, and social trends uh, uh, in Kenya, but uh, I'll make a brief reference to Africa and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, which we are part of, and just see how this will impact uh, 2022 uh, and beyond. Uh, but before I get there, um, just to say that uh, you know when we talk about 2022 and the outlook and what we uh, what's likely to uh, to be or not to be uh, in Africa, these six themes are very very uh, pertinent. Uh, looking at some of the political developments, political risks, and political relationships, there's a lot of this going on, and we do know that in our own country, 
uh, Kenya next year in August. On the 9th of August, we have a general election. And therefore, as leaders and as business people, it's important to reflect on what that means for our organizations. It's also important to look at the economic uh, side, uh, growth, pro growth prospects, uh, trade and investment and other uh, elements around that, you know, what's happening to economic growth, uh, interest rates, uh, um, exchange rates, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, only this morning in, in today's business daily, the governor, uh, central bank has maintained their, their main uh, rates uh, at 7%, but what does that mean for uh, 2022? We also then need to uh, and then finally of our the business that run. And so these are generally the that uh, interest at next uh, year. That is of the area of the whole area of uh, you know the social ends uh, that again are important uh, for I want uh, just to get a view from you first before we Sorry, Martin, I think we're losing you. Kelly, thank you for that. I thought it was happening on my end. So Martin, we cannot oh. hear you. Okay, All right, just a lost second. Him. Yeah, let's hope he comes back in. Okay, um, as we wait for Martin to jump back on, let me kindly request that for anyone who will have any questions arising during the talk, kindly post them on the chat so that we can be able to pick them from there and we can be able to ask the questions. Good, I see Martin is back, welcome back. Just unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Martin, please. Uh, thank you, thank you, apologies for thank that. Um, All right. uh, Kelly, uh, I was inviting Kelly to put up the Menti question so that we can, uh, uh, we can uh, test our, our own knowledge on this. So the first question um, there is, uh, how do you feel about 2022? So, just go into your, into, uh, click on menti.com and then type in that code, which is at the top of the screen, 68623267. So take your phone, go to menti.com, key in that number, 68623267. Six, and we've given you a multiple choice here, are you positive about 2022? Are you depressed about 2022? Are you neutral about 2022 or you don't know? So let's have everybody, we've got like 65 people on this call. So let's see 65 answers. I've seen only five. Let's engage, Rotarians. Let's engage. We still I've have seen 11 I've seen people. It. Yeah. <laughs> long way to go. We need more, more answers. 17. Okay. The code is 6862. 3267, in case you're searching for it, it's posted there in the chat. Let's participate. Masi, it looks like the Rotarian, looks like the Rotarians are having lunch actually. <laughs> we can multitask, we are great multitaskers. <laughs> so we've got 20, we've got 10 to go. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got actually 40 to go, but uh, we'll do with another eight. 
Yeah, if we get 50% of the room, at least we know. Right. We're there. Oh, great. We're almost there, guys. Let's keep it going. Okay. Martin, you have right. half the room responding. We've got half the room, so thank you very much. Um, at least what we can see is that almost 70% of the people here are very positive about 2022, which is... Uh, which is great. Uh, we've got 3% who are depressed, uh, and again, um, probably understandable. Um, and then we've got 36% uh, neutral and don't know. But the bulk of us uh, are positive about 22. Uh, when I wear my coaching hat, uh, we normally thrive in positivity, and therefore I'm happy about the, uh, the, the, the 63, but also happy about all the other respondents. So Kelly, let's go to the next question. So let's look at your, using the same, uh, the same number, uh, what predictions do you have on the economy for 2022? Um, are you predicting, predicting strong growth, uh, low growth, uh, decline, or moderate growth? All right. So low to moderate is winning at the moment, 28. 43%, 45% for moderate growth, 35% for low growth. Again, interesting that nobody is really expecting, not much is, not many people are expecting a decline uh, in the economy. 15% uh, are actually expecting strong growth, right? So again, you can see where our sentiment is in terms of growth for, for next year. Thank you very much. Kelly, can we go to the third question? All right. And, and do remember do remember those sentiments as we go through the discussion. Uh, the final two questions will come up shortly. Right, Kelly. There we go. All right. So there's a new code here. So if you can go in and type in this new code, 20364134. And the question now is, what predictions do you have on the presidential elections for next year? And the two choices are, Shall we get a clear winner in round one, or do you expect a contested election where we could spend the next six months going through the courts uh, and all the other processes? So again, interesting here. Uh, we've got 13, we need to get that number to 30. So far, the sense is that we may not get a clear winner in round one, and we may therefore have to brace ourselves for a longer election process. How long, we don't know. But again, as people who are in business, uh, people who are in employment, people who do various things, people who lead, it's important for us to always uh, be aware of what the choices uh, before us uh, could be so that we build that into our planning for, uh, for the work that we do. So again, we are, we are at about halfway mark. Uh, so con contested results versus clear winner in round one. It's close, but uh, that's the sentiment. And finally, Kelly. So this is an open question. Given what your thoughts are about 2022, what should businesses do? How should businesses uh, behave so that they can thrive in 2022? So just type one word or two words, or if you want to type a sentence. Uh, here we shall uh, go with the first 10 that we receive. 
what should businesses do? What are you planning to do for 2022 in order to thrive? So agility, listen to your customers. Thank you. Global and online, reduce costs, minimize investment, stay resilient and innovative, be optimistic, be prepared, adapt, collaborate, not become consumed by the political sideshows. Thank you all very much. Uh, risk management, innovation, optimistic. Great. Uh, thank you all very much for that response. So Kelly, you can pull this down now. Digitize. Plan with 2017 in mind, hybrid working. Be prudent, be customer oriented. All right, Kelly. Sorry, I was having too much fun reading that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's good to have fun, uh, Kelly. I'm sure Rotarians have fun from time to time as well. Can you see my screen? Is it big yes, enough? We can. All right, yes. great. So thank, thank you for you. thank you for responding to those. Um, I think as we move forward, then uh, a couple of points that I wanted to make here. Um, if you look at the the global uh, economic uh, space, what we are seeing is that uh, following the COVID disruptions of last year, this recovery which which uh, has been taking place uh, this year. The only problem, of course, is uh, the announcement last week with the Omicron uh, variant, um, you know, out of South Africa last week, which begins to complicate the situation and obviously requires that uh, we as business people begin to take this into account uh, as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, having said that, uh, we do hope that uh, or assume that some of the vaccines uh, and, and, and the continued development of vaccines may be able to help uh, you know, going forward, but certainly in the short run, there's uh, a disruption that is that is occurring now. I, in the newspaper today, you may have seen that uh, Rwanda uh, has has banned flights from South Africa. You know, in, uh, alongside uh, the European countries, which did that last week. So um, we don't know the announcement that is going to come out of uh, government today. I haven't been following news this morning, so I don't know if announcements have already been made. Uh, but that is a disruption to. To the progress that uh, that we that uh, uh, would hope for. Um, the, the other thing to note is just looking at uh, a ten-year period between 2016 and 2026. Um, looking at the the GDP growth rates across sub-Saharan Af Sub Africa and the predictions, we're seeing that we're probably going to be in that range of about four uh, percent over the next uh, five to six years, etc. Uh, as 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 uh, as a prediction. In our own economy, some of the things which might be of concern to us, of course, uh, will remain issues such as security. We saw in the last two or three weeks what was happening in Uganda with regard to the terrorist uh, bombings there. Um, they're our neighbor and therefore what happens there uh, is, it gives us a cause for, uh, for concern and for reflection. We know what is happening in many sectors in the, in the economy, tourism, um, and the hospitality industry, uh, as I've mentioned, as we all know, we have elections next year, and we've got our perennial issues around corruption and financial mismanagement. We've seen the shilling weakening in recent times, and interest rates beginning to creep upwards. Although the announcement by the announcement by the govern, governor this morning or yesterday by the MPC uh, may, may may slow that that uh, a little bit. If we look at the GDP uh, in Kenya and the share of different sectors, what we see is that uh, agriculture has continued to take a larger proportion of our GDP over the last 10 years, 25% uh, 10 years ago, 35% today, with industry at 16% and all the other services combined at 42%. And uh, you know, the sense is that the numbers will stay fairly close to this over the next two to three years. And therefore, some of the risks that we see uh, for the country going into 2022 uh, include risks around the political landscape and the electioneering that has already started uh, uh, informally because the, the election period has actually not been declared, not been open. But we see, we know what's happening across the country. Currency volatility, commodity price fluctuations, uh, reduction in investment, certainly as we go into an election year, 
uh, people tend to hold back investments uh, until they see what the outcome is. And therefore that could result in economic slowdown. I've spoken about security. COVID remains a big concern for us. Uh, we don't know when the end will be in sight. Uh, and certainly uh, we all need to, uh, to be very, very careful and to, to, to work hard to stay safe. And then of course in businesses, the issues around talent and around people uh, and how uh, the new ways of working are, uh, are, are impacting us. It's interesting, I've been looking at this chart for many years now, and this is a chart that uh, shows uh, the uh, plots economic growth um, rates against the different years, and especially in election cycle. And what is, what is, what is uh, obvious here is that in the years when we have elections, uh, economic growth uh, goes down, economic growth rates go down. If you go back as far as 1992, you see that blip. If you go to 1997, you see that blip. If you go to 2002, you see that. If you go to 2007, you see that. If you go to 2012, you see that. If you go to 2017, you see that. And therefore, this is a pattern which has been established over the last 20 years or so. Uh, and, and there's nothing to suggest that 2022 is going to be different uh, from here. Although government remains very bullish, uh, yesterday I did hear that uh, we are still on track for Vision 2030. Uh, remember that Vision 2030 assumed that we are going to be growing at an average rate of 10% per year for um, you know ever since it was launched, so maybe 10, 15 years ago. We have not hit 10% uh, at all in any year, and therefore um, there, there, there's something to question around uh, that optimism. If we look at the other issues, um, an increased political uncertainty uh, as we go through the succession politics, uh, the vaccination rates are not yet where they, uh, they ought to be, and uh, that's, that's a concern. Uh, the recovery uh, has been slow, although at the moment we are looking at four or 5%, but uh, overall, some of the sectors have not recovered as, as, as well as they ought to be. Uh, consumer spending has been eroded. And so we see a number of those negatives and some of those are going to carry forward into 2022. There's also been a prediction around drought and farming because of uh, poor rainy season uh, in, in the early part of next year. Um, and that could portend uh, some, some, some uh, negatives for around food security. Uh, then of course, the whole area of climate change is a big topic now coming out of uh, COP26 recently. If you look at some of the scenarios that have been discussed uh, around uh, the, the economy, the Kenyan economy, and this come, is coming out of the COVID year last year. Uh, as you know, you know the, the, the rates went negative, uh, negative two last year. And therefore in the three scenarios that uh, the economists were looking at last year, the most positive one was see was is a yellow line here, which was seeing a bounce back, which was going to take the country to uh, just under 6% uh, growth rate, five point something. Uh, if the country limped back, uh, then that would be in just under 4%. And in a, in a, in a, in a fallback where things were really uh, going badly, then the growth rates were going to remain negative. I think we're somewhere between the, the fallback, the, the limp back and the bounce back scenario here. And therefore what we see for the next uh, couple of years is probably an average growth rate of around 5% uh, uh, across, uh, 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 across uh, you know the the the, the, the country, um, and again I'm not an economist, and therefore I'm picking up this from uh, literature that is uh, widely available. If we look at politics, uh, obviously our country's politics is still very much um, ethnic based and and very little issue based politics. Uh, there's hope that over the next ten to twenty years we would gravitate more towards issue based politics and. Uh, and, 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 and stronger parties that can that are issue based, um, and so we will see between now and uh, August next year or and April uh, a lot of uh, shifting affiliations in the political scene. Uh, what we do know, obviously, is that uh, if you look at the timetable for elections, uh, the registration of voters closed recently. Uh, nominations happen early in the new year. Uh, and the elections happen in August uh, uh, next year. And that's how we've said this possibility that actually there could be a runoff 
uh, if a candidate does not get the 50% plus one, uh, which which then uh, will will uh, will count towards a clear election, a clear win, uh, and therefore as businesses we do um, you know have to look at uh, to look at that. The usual risks around elections uh, stay with us. Um, uh, obviously, everybody is hoping that uh, we've learned from the past, and that therefore uh, the kind of violence seen uh, in 2007 and uh, to, an, to an extent in 2017 will not repeat. Uh, and that we can have uh, a, a, a fairly smooth election, but uh, uh, that's that's kind of being being hopeful uh, given what we are seeing uh, at the moment. I want to play a very short video here uh, just to reflect on some of the the business trends for 2022. And again, Kelly, just let me know if you can hear the sound. The eight biggest trends transforming businesses in 2022. Can you hear the sound? Yes. Across all sectors, organizations are grappling with rapid transformation. On top of that, there's enorm there are enormous global shifts and challenges uh, to con contend with, such as climate change and shifting political in and economic power. To put it bluntly, our world is changing fast and organizations must learn to adapt accordingly. These eight major shifts provide a snapshot uh, of how business operations are evolving to suit our rapidly changing world. Sustainable, resilient operations. Every organization must seek to eliminate or reduce the environmental costs of doing business. Decarbonizing the supply chain is a sensible place to start, but forward-thinking businesses are looking beyond the supply chain to improve sustainability across all business operations. And of course, sustainability is linked to resilience, since resilience means being able to adapt and survive in the long run. Any business that ignores sustainability is unlikely to do well in the age of conscious consumption. Finding the balance between human workers and intelligent robots. We now have increasingly capable robots and artificial intelligence, AI systems, that can take on tasks that were previously done by humans. This leaves employers with some key questions. How do we find the balance between intelligent machines and human intelligence? What roles should be given over to machines, which should be the ones humans do? Which roles are best suited to humans? There's no doubt that automation will affect every industry. So business leaders must prepare their organization and their people for the changing nature of work. The shifting talent pool and changing employee experience. The way we work is evolving, with more younger people entering the workforce, more gig workers and more remote workers. Many believe that traditional full-time employment will be a thing of the past, as organizations shift to hiring people on a contract basis, with those contractors working remotely. And businesses need to be really ready for this. Flatter, more agile organizations. Traditionally, organizations have been hierarchical and rigid in their structures, but that is changing as leaders recognize the need for flatter, more agile structures that allow business to quickly reorganize teams and respond to change. It is also in part a response to the changing nature of work, particularly the, the, the rise in freelance and remote workers. This is the age of flatter organizational structures, which are more like flexible communities rather than top-down pyramid structures. Authenticity. Today's consumers are seeking a more meaningful connection with brands. And this need for connection has given rise to authenticity as a business trend in its own right. Authenticity helps to foster human connections because as humans, we like to see brands and business leaders display important human qualities like honesty, reliability, 
empathy, compassion, humility, and maybe even a bit of vulnerability and fear. We want brands and leaders to care about issues and stand for more than just turning a profit. Purposeful business. Linked to authenticity, this trend is all about ensuring your organization exists to serve a meaningful purpose and not just serve up profits to shareholders. Purpose defines why an organization exists, not what the organization is or what it does or for whom. Therefore, purpose is different to mission and vision. Importantly, a strong purpose has the promise of transformation or striving for something better, be it a better world, a better way to do something or whatever is important in your organization. Co-opetition and integration. We live in a time where pretty much anything can be achieved by outsourcing. The global business world has never been so integrated. And it's a good job because the need to work together to solve key business challenges, not to mention humanity's biggest challenges, is great. Indeed, in the future, it will become increasingly difficult to succeed without really close partnerships with other organizations. In practice, it means greater supply chain integration, more data integration and sharing of data between organizations, and even cooperation between competitors. New forms of funding. The ways in which companies can generate finance is also changing. New platforms and mechanisms have sprung up to connect businesses with investors and donors. Think crowd, crowdfunding, initial coin offerings, tokenization and special purpose acquisition companies, SPACs. Many of these new methods are driven by decentralized finance movement in which financial services like borrowing and trading take place in a peer-to-peer -peer network via public decentralized blockchain networks, for example. You can learn more about Right. Um, I'm conscious of time, so I'll move a bit, a bit faster, but I do hope that you picked up a couple of things from that video uh, clip uh, about some of the trends uh, that we would expect uh, to continue to see in 2022. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, some of the strategies therefore for 2022 need to be talking to obviously appreciating the fact that uh, we got to keep up with COVID. Uh, it's not going anywhere, it's around. Uh, and therefore our response, uh, proactive uh, engagement there is important. Uh, digital transformation is something that businesses have uh, accelerated during 2020 and uh, 2021, and that will, be, that will continue. Uh, meeting customers where they are, uh, uh, again, this is a big thing. Uh, you know, your customers want convenience. They want you to reach them where they are. And therefore, again, using digital channels and other market making channels there is important. Uh, social media responding to employees changing uh, work practices uh, are some of the, the things that uh, would be important for, 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 for leaders as we go forward. I just want to pick up the issue around employees and vitality, which is really uh, a, the, the concept of being a caring employer and sustainability issues around uh, ESG, environmental, social and governance, uh, as well as inclusivity, uh, which, uh, which, which is important uh, as well as we go into, into the future. Obviously, uh, our world has changed and therefore emotional intelligence as leaders becomes a big thing uh, for us, data-led decision-making uh, and, and digital, this whole thing about digital and human, uh, the balance between those two uh, remains quite important. And so um, again, as we've been doing in 2021, some of the issues continuing in 2022, uh, really around improving the way that we operate, the way we run our companies, the way we engage with our customers, the kind of experience that we're giving customers and look at our business models to ensure that they can continue to generate revenue and revenue growth. I want to stop there and I want to stop sharing here uh, so that at least we've got 10 minutes or so, or maybe five minutes, uh, massive for us to engage before you had given me a hard stop at two o'clock and I want to obey that. So we probably have got five minutes just for two or three observations uh, from you, but thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Masi.
Wow, thank you so much, Martin, for that very de in-depth, insightful presentation. It's my second time to listen to you and to watch it, but I was still taking notes and scribbling away uh, because there's just so much, so much nuggets in there. If you're a business person, which I believe most of us in here are, or you work for an organization, I believe that has given you some good insights that you can put into consideration as we finish the year and as we begin 2022. And I want to ask, is there anyone who has a question? Um, you can type it in the chat or you can raise your hand and I will ask you to unmute yourself and uh, you can ask your question. You can ask your question, anyone? I'm checking the chat to see if there are any questions. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a question actually, Marcy. It can be a comment actually. Maybe somebody disagrees vehemently with what I've said. <laughs> yes, that too. We, we are open for feedback or commentary uh, or clarification that you might be seeking. Uh, that is also well to be received. Maybe I'll start by this, Martin, even as we wait for comments uh, to come through. Uh, I spent a good chunk of my years working in corporate and lastly with uh, the Association of Manufacturers and that graph where you shared uh, in terms of the deep that we always witness uh, every election cycle, we used to reference that as being uh, a bump, you know, like a speed bump that really slows our economy because everyone is playing cautious and, and being very um, pessimistic about any outcomes that are forthcoming there. And uh, I just thought I should throw that in and just say, uh, we, we recognize it. It's, it's almost like a conscious reaction that business does. No one wants to let out too much, uh, but they hope that they can be able to uh, bounce back as quickly as, or pick up speed after that session. So I see a question from Patricia. Patricia, you say, thanks for the insightful presentation. What are your thoughts on Bitcoin as finance investment for business? Martin, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? Thank you, Patricia, for that question. Martin, you're muted. You need to admit yourself. Sorry, Marcy, my uh, my network is really is really deteriorating now. Uh, just repeat the question. Uh, Patricia is asking, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin as a finance investment for business? Well, I, I've seen some bankers in the room here. I would like to throw that question to them, actually. David Lubera, is he in the room? Do you want to take that for me? I'm not actually an expert in Bitcoin and I haven't followed it closely, Marcy. So that's why I'm trying to get some help in the room. Yes, I see David is there. David, kindly Hi, unmute Martin. yourself and help. Hi, David. Yes, nice to see you. you. Thanks, Martin. This is what we clearly call a suicide pass. Must have been many of those at the rugby tournament over the weekend in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but to the question, I think there's been a lot of comments and and um and feedback and um, I think insights about Bitcoin comes out clearly across the board is that it's still as an investment avenue that still uncharted, especially now in our area. And um, you got to understand it. You got to research deeply into it. Is it something that you'd want to put in, for example, the non-extra coins that you, you, you believe that you have and take the inordinate risk that is involved with it? I don't think so. Um, in a lot of conversations I have with clients about investment opportunities, is Bitcoin one of the areas that I would advise them to do? Maybe if you'd want to try small as you try and learn it, maybe you could do that extra cash. Is there a lot of extra cash in the kind of financial environment that we are in right now? I'm not too sure that that could be the case. So um, to answer that question, just straight to the point, I think um, 
investing in Bitcoin for finance investment for business at this moment in this financial environment with so many unanswered questions about Bitcoin itself as a carrier of wealth and uh, investment growth. I think that's still something that is uh, a coin that is still up in the air, uh, needs further, I would believe, uh, comments or views. Martin? David, thank you very much. That's what uh, working with one another many years ago uh, means. So thank you, David, for res rescuing me there. Masi? <laughs> I thank you both for showing such exemplary leadership qualities. You know, leaders are always ready to respond. And uh, Martin, we know as leaders, we don't know everything. So we are willing to have somebody else chip Absolutely. in. So thank you Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, David, for that. Now, Peter Mbui um, is asking a question, and he's my, he's our PDG, past district governor. Peter, would you mind putting on your microphone and asking your question, or do you want me to read it? No, I can ask the question. Uh, yes, thank you do. very much, uh, Martin, for the great presentation. What I was asking is that uh, now that uh, you have shown us a graph where we know very well that there's going to be a dip next year. Shouldn't your advice be that for us in business, we try cutting costs, prepare to cut costs. And if you are holding some money, you put it in the bank just in case things uh, become tight. Uh, isn't that the advice you'd give your son uh, if you know there's going to be some problems in the future next year? <laughs> You know, Peter, some of these become self-fulfilling prophecies. Uh, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> uh, but, but yes, I mean, you're certainly right. Uh, as we've seen over the last two years, um, you know, uh, managing costs, uh, you know, uh, very, very well, as well as maintaining liquidity have been two uh, specific measures that organizations have had to, 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 to take uh, to survive. And so, you know, the same would, would, would apply to next year that uh, we should not be, become, uh, we, should, we, should, we should manage those costs, uh, you know, really well uh, and, and hold some liquidity. But you see the economy still needs to grow, Peter. Therefore, if all of us uh, held back everything, then we'll go back to the negatives uh, as we saw in previous election cycles. Okay. Back to you, Okay, thank you, Martin, Masi? for that response. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to request, because I see some questions which I believe are very important and we all want to hear the answers to this. Uh, I'm going to request that we kindly allow for just a little bit of an overrun from our usual 2 p.m. so that we can get these questions answered. So um, I see another question. Beatrice Karaoke, would you like to ask your question, Beatrice, please? Unmute yourself. Beatrice, we can't hear you. Okay, in the interest of time, Beatrice, can you hear me? I see you're unmuted, but I don't hear you. But since you've typed it, let me ask the question then. It says, issue-based politics has always been a dream, but remains a mirage. You put it at 10 years before we can transition from ethnic-based to issue-based politics. Is this a given? What role can business class play to get us there sooner than later, Martin? Right, 10 years was actually picked from the air. So um, don't believe me about 10 years. It could actually take much longer depending on how, um, especially uh, young people in our country uh, take to the, uh, the, the politicians and what, what they're offering or not offering or the rhetoric that we hear from them every day. So we could be in this for a long period of time. I think the, 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 the relevant point that you raised is about what can we as leaders do? Um, and I think for me, it's really uh, around continuing to participate and to voice, uh, you know, the, the fact that we need to get to issue-based politics uh, and move away from uh, from ethnic-based pol politics at every opportunity that we have. So as Rotarians, in our business groupings, in our forums, wherever we have an opportunity to speak with other people, that we go, and whenever we talk to our own uh, children, our youth, and everybody else in our circle, our professional circles, 
that this is a message that we as, as leaders need to pass uh, in, in a very passionate way, because that's the only way that, we'll, uh, that we will be able to, to, to cut this, uh, this yoke that has held us for so far. Masi? Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I'm going to ask the final question from Dr. Joe Kamau. Um, Dr. Joe Kamau, if you can unmute yourself, do you want to ask the question? Oh, thank you, Masi, and uh, uh, thank you for a great presentation. In the last slide that talks about strategies, I was just thinking, do you think uh, diversification would be one of the key strategies uh, to minimize the risk or the exposure in the coming years? Um, thanks for that question. Uh, um, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I think diversification is something that, uh, you know, uh, has been with us and uh, certainly, you know, uh, businesses do know and have realized that concentration risk um, of, of, of any form uh, is a big risk. Um, and for div diversification across sectors, div diversification across geographies, diversification across products, uh, these are all um, you know, strategies that uh, I would suggest that businesses need to look at uh, so that you're not a one, one product, you know, one solution organization, but that you can actually, uh, if one is going down, you can, you can, you, you can still survive because something else may be doing better than, uh, than than that and uh, we've seen it in the last two years again uh, so i used to sit on the board of kenya airways uh, for example up to early this year and when no passengers were flying uh, kenya airways quickly diversified into cargo and that helped them uh, move the agenda forward at least survive for a couple of months until the passenger traffic started uh, coming back again so yes you're absolutely right joe thanks and back to you uh, Masi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. And uh, again, that very insightful presentation. And um, fellow Rotarians, friends and family of Rotary, I hope that you have gleaned from that presentation and that you are able to see that we all have a role to play, whether in our personal or professional lives. There is something we can do in order to take advantage of the opportunities that will be presented in 2022 or even help us to overcome the challenges. We all have a duty to vote. That contested elections or otherwise, we are the ones who will determine that. The issues of security, the issues of us getting vaccinated, we all have a role to play. So let us not be bystanders uh, or, or side observers. Let's jump in, let's take a role, let's play our role and let us be able to make the difference uh, that will make our country become better, make ourselves become better citizens. So Martin, we thank you once again for taking time out to be able to spend time with Rotarians this afternoon, and we are truly grateful to you. Back to you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy, for narrating this. And uh, thank you so, so much, Martin, for being with us this afternoon. I think all of us have uh, learned a lot. We've uh, taken grasp of everything that you've said. You've given us the, the challenges that we are expecting and they are real. We can see what is going to happen in the coming year, what has already happened, the risks that are there. But on the other side, there are opportunities. And these opportunities we've actually experienced most of them. And I like the one about the shift to younger people being the ones who are running with most of the things that are happening around and the need to change and have a balance in the things that we do. So we'll always be appreciative of what you have uh, taught us today and what you have brought us today. It has all, it has woken all of us. So thank you, thank you so much. And we welcome you, we welcome you again to be part of this uh, team, the Rotarians who are here this day. You have really, really impacted on them. In view of time, um, I want to remind all of us about those who might not have uh, paid for the, for the admin fees and also anybody with happy donors, please put them on the, 
and the number that was displayed earlier by Matthew. And Matthew, you can put it up again, just to remind all of us. And uh, with that, I want to recognize leadership. Um, if Rotary leaders who are in the meeting today and appreciate all of you. We have our very own PDG Pitambui, uh, past president Amos Olo um, president, uh, past president Joe Kamau, past president Itota Dale, our immediate past president Tom Shivu, president elect uh, Hilda Dikera, and president elect Rorin Kirigia. So thank you so much for being in this meeting today. And um, in view of time, I think we want to close the meeting, but before we close the meeting, we need to do the final toast. So again, I would ask all of us if you have a glass, um, and if you don't have a glass, let's put our right hand on our chest to give a toast. So coupled with the Lottery Club of Karendata, Lottery Club of Madaraka, Lottery Club of Lavington Gioni, Lottery Club of uh, Hallingham, Lottery Club of uh, Karen, Lottery Club of Kerito. Let's give a toast to Lottery. Lottery, world over. Lottery, the world over. Thank you very much and have a blessed afternoon. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you.